Welcome everybody to this webinar from Lin Shiping University, where you signed up to hear more about the master program in materials physics for nano and quantum technology. You're going to hear all about this program in the next half an hour or so, um, as we have the presenters lined up for you. Um, but before we go over to them, I would like to briefly explain to you how this works. First of all, my name is Luke Mulling. I'm the moderator of the session of today. And um, yeah, you have a couple of options at your fingertips. So first of all, important is that this is an interactive session. Um, so you can ask your questions at any time. You can do that by typing the questions in the box on the right, where um, yeah, you can just type it in and hit send. Then they will reach us. We will be answering the live questions at the end of the session. Um, and for those people that are watching the recording, you can also still ask the questions. So you can take advantage of it and still do that. They, however, will of course not be answered live, but they will be sent by email through to the staff uh, of Lin Shipping University and they can come back to you. What else do you see? Um, you also see on the right hand a list of resources, a couple of useful links um, that we prepared for you, for example, about the program, the more details, if you want to check that out at the end, or how to apply, or um, a bit more about yeah, the background of Linköping University, and for example, a virtual lounge that we have created, um, where you can find a lot of useful information about the university and again about the programs as well. Um, but i like to say check that out later at the end because, of course, now we like to start off with um, this specific presentation about the program Materials Physics for Nano and Quantum Technology. And I would like to hand it over to uh, the moderator on Lin Shipping site, Therese Winder. Hello, Therese. Hi, Luke. Thanks, Luke. Right, as Luke has said, uh, welcome to a, a webinar mm -hmm. in uh, Material Physics and Quantum Technology from Lin Shipping University. Uh, my name is Therese Winder and um, I'm a communications officer and I will guide you through this webinar. I'm here with Marcus Ekholm who might want to say hello. Hello, hello. Yes, my name is uh, Marcus Ekholm and I am a uh, contact person for this uh, program. And uh, in a minute I will present an overview of the program and we will also hear a presentation from Xavier Guilherm about quantum technology. and. Afterwards, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Marcus. Um, so today, uh, you will be uh, watching two presentations, one by Marcus and one by his colleague. And you also see a third film, which is a student testimonial. Um, and after this is all complete, uh, we will answer the questions that, that you have. Um, as, as Luke said, the, the webinar is being recorded, so, so don't worry if you, if you miss parts uh, or want to view it again, it will be available on our YouTube channel. Uh, but let's start with the, with the first presentation. At Lean Shipping University, we have a very strong research environment in physics related to materials. Within this program, we offer courses in advanced materials physics with applications in nano and quantum technology. This means to study structures on the nanometer scale. It means to understand materials, properties, and phenomena on the scale of individual atoms. An object such as a drill bit can be analyzed on the macro scale. This is the field of engineering. We may analyze its microstructure and see how it performs and reacts under working conditions. On a yet smaller scale, the properties of the material can be related to how atoms interact with each other. Being able to understand and manipulate atoms allows new structures and materials to be fabricated, with properties tailored to specific needs. Moreover, we need to understand the connection between all these length scales in order to produce a material that can work in realistic conditions. The applications of advanced materials physics and nanotechnology are vast. New technology is often based on advances in material science, building on the ability to understand and manipulate materials from the atomic scale. 
Nanotechnology is currently found in our everyday lives, from sunscreens to smartphones. Advances in material science is the basis for solar cells, ultra-hard coatings, rechargeable batteries, and new microelectronics. So this field meets the needs of both industry and society in general, not the least in terms of sustainable technology. As a student, you will learn the physics behind many such applications. You will be ready to take part in the development of new knowledge and technology. In order to understand real materials, we need to apply both classical physics and modern physics. This means that many different branches of physics are applied. In the program, you will get a deep understanding of how advanced concepts within classical and modern physics are used to understand physical phenomena related to materials. Research in this field comprises both experiments numerical simulations, and theoretical modeling. Our research at Linköping University comprises all three methods, and this is reflected in the curriculum of the program. As a student, you will be trained in using advanced research equipment for both experiments and computer simulations. You will learn how to choose experimental methods and theoretical models suitable for each specific purpose. In order to be admitted, you need a bachelor's degree in physics or applied physics, material science, electrical engineering, or something equivalent. You need to have 20 ECTS credits in mathematics, including calculus, linear algebra, and Fourier transforms. You also need 30 credits in fundamental physics, including mechanics, optics, modern physics, electromagnetism, and thermodynamics. This master's program is a two-year program divided into four semesters. In Sweden, an academic year starts in August and ends in June the following year. Studies should be considered a full-time job. Your first three semesters will consist of courses, followed by one semester devoted to your diploma project. This is an outline of all available courses within the curriculum. Each of these blocks correspond to a six credit course. Most courses span half the semester, while some run over the entire semester. In the first semester, you will study mandatory courses in quantum mechanics parallel with the modern optics course and the experimental physics course. This is followed by computational physics in parallel with solid state physics one and experimental physics. In this chart, we have divided the courses in different categories called theoretical physics, materials and nanophysics, quantum technology. In the first semester, you will get an introduction to all three categories which will give you a solid foundation for the various fields of study that you can pursue in this program. In the following two semesters, you are free to choose among all courses. The only remaining mandatory course is the Communication, Ethics, and Sustainable Development course. This is a course in professional English communication, both orally and in writing. You will also learn to think about your area of expertise in terms of sustainable development. We offer courses in both theoretical and experimental physics. You may choose your own blend of materials and advanced applications. Note that we also offer courses in fields such as particle physics, relativity, and chaos theory. You may also study computer graphics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. In the experimental physics courses, you will learn various growth and characterization techniques. In the theoretical physics courses, you will learn not only advanced theory, but also high performance computing and how to use machine learning in materials research. Normally, the content of the courses is presented at lectures, laboratory work, and seminars. Participation 
at lectures and problem-solving classes is usually voluntary, while laboratory work and seminars are compulsory. We also offer project courses to train you in conducting a research project. One of those courses is based on the CDIO concept, conceive, design, implement, and operate. The focus is then on advanced problems in materials physics, where you learn to identify, formulate, and solve problems in a team-based environment. One of the main goals is to learn how to work in industrial conditions and deliver results in a given time frame. The final semester will be devoted to your master's thesis. This can be conducted in a research group within the university or externally in industry, a public agency, or even a different university. You will summarize your work in a written thesis in the form of a scientific report describing your work, results, and a literature study. You will also make a public defense of your thesis. You will graduate a Master of Science in Applied Physics or Physics. You'll be ready for a career in research and development in industry or even pursue PhD studies. So welcome to Linshipping University. We are committed to high quality teaching and we can offer you an active environment as a student. If you are interested in physics, I hope to see you on campus this fall. At the end of this session, I will be happy to answer any question you may have, and you can also send me an Hi everyone, uh, my name is Guilherme Xavier. I'm a senior lecturer at the Electrical Engineering Department of Linköping University, and I'm going to be talking about uh, quantum technologies in the new master program in materials physics that will be offered now in the fall. Okay, so the first thing is, what is quantum technology? Uh, it's an emerging field of physics and engineering where practical applications are created that depend directly on the properties of quantum mechanics, such as quantum superposition and quantum entanglement. And basically, these properties allow us to create applications that are just not possible if we are only, uh, which are only based on uh, systems that only follow uh, classical, I mean, the field of classical physics such as, for example, uh, electronics. Uh, so uh, one very popular example right now is quantum computing. So here is an example of uh, a cryostat holding a superconducting circuit, which allows, uh, which allows the processing of information to be done over a number of qubits or quantum bits. And that gives us uh, some advantages for some tasks. So there's a lot of research right now going on into quantum computing to try to demonstrate uh, applications where uh, a quantum computer can show an advantage over a classical computer. And this has very recently been realized uh, by uh, in two different ways, one using a superconducting computer and the other using also photons. Uh, another field is quantum communication. This is an area I work on. So this uh, actually relies on, uh, on, on single uh, photons and entangled photons to transmit information. And that allows us to improve the security of uh, communication systems. And also, uh, it's, it's the way that we will be able to connect quantum computers across a future network of or the so-called quantum internet. Another area is also called quantum imaging, where uh, it's, uh, we're basically able to, for example, generate images by uh, illuminating our, our object with, uh, with uh, a photon of a photon pair, and then we only measure the other photon, and then we are able to reconstruct the image in any case. So this is also, uh, this is also referred a bit as, as ghost imaging. So this gives rise to a different class of applications as well, where you may be able to measure your object by not shining, but by not shining direct light onto it. So this has some advantages in some scenarios as well. And a final uh, major area is called quantum sensing. And for example, uh, one, one way that uh, this is now being used is to detect very tiny magnetic fields using uh, also individual quantum systems to basically be able to read out that very, very small field.
I should also comment why uh, is uh, material science important in quantum technologies? Well, I should say in pretty much every single area because we depend on very specific materials to be able to uh, carry out uh, operations that don't destroy uh, the information that's been held onto the quantum state. So, uh, for example, uh, one, one area that's been very, very uh, traditional is the generation of pairs of single photons. And this is done on, on the so-called nonlinear crystals, where basically you shine light onto the crystal, and from that light you can generate pairs of, of correlated photons. Another is nanostructured materials. Uh, this is nowadays uh, a very good uh, way of generating very high-quality single photons. And one way is to embed a quantum dot onto a vertical cavity made of rag reflectors. And this is all done on a semiconductor structure using different materials. So this uh, is a very uh, also uh, promising way to generate very high quality single photons. Uh, another uh, subfield is, uh, or devices are single photon detectors. So this is the picture of a, semi a superconducting nanowire that's used to detect single photons. That's a very efficient way of detecting single photons, which is very important in quantum technologies, because not only you have to generate your state, in this case, encoded onto a single photon, but you also need, must be able to detect it. Uh, integrated photonic circuits is also nowadays growing very, very fast. This is typically now being done onto uh, silicon substrates. So it's the same technology as, as uh, standard electronics, CMOS electronics. But here you can see the waveguides which are uh, engraved onto the, onto the chip. And basically your single photons propagate through these paths and then you can do a different number of operations on them depending on, on what's on the chip. And you can also see these spirals which are uh, delays, I mean time delays that we have uh, made on the, on the chips. And finally, uh, superconducting circuits. As I mentioned, these are the, the cornerstone of superconducting computers. And again, this is based on superconducting materials. So as it's very, very important that, I mean, the, the way uh, the materials are developed uh, and combined can give us different behaviors, which is very important because the quantum states are actually very fragile uh, by themselves. So we need to have really well-tuned material systems to be able to basically carry out the information processing in a faithful uh, way. Uh, just some brief words why this is a very good uh, or it's a very promising good master program is that there is a very solid background at Lin Shopping uh, University. Uh, and this comes from a strong collaboration between physics and electrical engineering. So uh, quantum technologies sp specifically depends a lot on both areas. It's a very multi multidisciplinary field. And uh, we have also, we have already developed new courses, which are already starting now, even, even, uh, even before the master, uh, the new master program begins. So we have new courses on quantum technology in the fields of quantum optics, quantum algorithms. So basically this course is intended to uh, teach you roughly how to program a quantum computer uh, or how to develop algorithms and also uh, quantum communication as well. So this, all these three are, are new courses that are now running and will, will, will help give a strong theoretical background to this master program. And an important question is what kind of thesis can be done? Because as, as a requirement in the master program, you need to develop a thesis in the end. Uh, so, for example, last uh, two years ago, uh, this was a thesis that was done at my group by a student called Sebastian Friedel, uh, which was called Designing Photonic Integrated Circuits Using Silicon Nitride Triplex Optical Waveguides. So, uh, Sebastian de designed uh, a circuit on uh, to perform basically uh, spatial multiplexing and the multiplexing of spatial modes of light directly in a chip. And we have gotten the chip manufactured now, so now we're in the process of testing it. So this is the kind of, of uh, so it, it's a very uh, applied project. I mean, it, it's, it was really the design of a circuit, of an optical circuit with, with a well-defined goal. And now this circuit has been manufactured and we're basically undergoing uh, characterization. So in this, in this case, there are many, many possibilities in experimental uh, thesis work, and also that we also have uh, examples as well of uh, theoretical develop, uh, 
of thesis that were done on a more theoretical level, basically aiming at uh, demonstrating some features of quantum computers and uh, optimizations in that sense. Uh, having said that, I would like uh, to thank you for your attention. And yeah, thank you very much. I often explain this as um, baking a cake to your friends and family. You choose your ingredients. The ingredients are those uh, metallic uh, sheets or metal targets. And then you decide what kind of a flavor you want. And then you bake the cake. Basically, you grow the structures in this giant oven, which is the main chamber here. And uh, depending on what flavor you want, you can change the targets and uh, achieve different kind of uh, films. There it is. So I grow, in um, complicated terms, I would say I grow helicoidal nanostructures um, for optical effects. They are nanostructures with a specific shape. So in my case, it is a spiral, let's say. And uh, we look for interesting uh, polarization properties uh, from those nanostructures. I'm Samir Mberagi. I am a PhD student here at uh, Liu and I work in the Material Optics Unit of uh, the Thin Film Physics Division at IFM. I was into nanotechnology. I had a master's in nanoscience and nanotechnology, basically. And after my master's thesis in Singapore, I was looking for a place to, to do my PhD, because that's the logical next step, I guess. And I'm interested in academia. I guess as, as a master's student, you would mostly be looking at um, a website, websites like uh, top universities, QS rankings, those kinds of things. And uh, basically at that stage, you are looking for uh, a good university where you can pursue your further education. So that is how I came uh, in contact. Uh, that, uh, that is how I came to know about Liu, basically. Liu is quite well ranked uh, when you look at um, universities based on uh, material science research. That was primarily my focus. And uh, also, it has a uh, high research output when you look at it. And also, there are some factors like employability. So basically, after do getting a degree from Liu, the, the chances of um, securing an employment are also quite good. Uh, whilst working here, I've also realized that uh, Liu has quite uh, good international connections and collaborations. So that also improves your job profile by quite a bit. After coming here, I realized that the teaching practices which are here at Liu are quite fantastic. Um, they are focused more on learning and understanding and not really just reading stuff and, yeah, just memorizing texts. It's not like that. It, the, the focus is mostly on understanding uh, and learning something. So I find it quite, uh, quite impressive and fascinating. These two cylindrical things are magnetrons. And on top of a magnetron, you have a metallic sheet so what we are doing here is that we are trying to make the metal particles uh, come out of this metallic sheet and go and hit onto something placed here. The thing that you have here is called the sample holder. And basically, you have like a, a substrate there where these metallic particles from the targets go and uh, deposit. And that is what is making uh, the, the thin film that we talk about. I must say, um, in Sweden, you have uh, something for everybody, I guess. Um, let's say, for me, uh, I'm not a very social person, I'm limitedly social, but at the same time, um, I do hang out with friends over the weekends, and uh, when there are times when I'm not really in the mood to meet people, I can go out um, into the woods, basically. I also am a photography enthusiast, so yeah, I can go to lakes and visit lakes and woods and click pictures and things like that. So, And of course, um, I think as a, I'm a PhD student, but as a master student or something, you can also join many uh, student unions here. And then you can get to meet um, different groups of people who share the similar interests. And then you can find, um, I don't know, something to do together uh, over the weekends. Over the weekdays, uh, probably you have work. But at the same time, work and study, they are, um, as it goes in Sweden, in a lagom sense that uh, you do as much as you're required to do, and then you also find some time to, to hang out with friends or relax at the end of the day or something. I come from a tropical place, and um, the weather in a tropical place, if you've been to one, is mostly the same all throughout the year. 
So I was looking for a change, basically, you can say, and I have an open mind in that regard. Also, I have heard very, very good things about Sweden, and now I'm experiencing it, so yeah. The research output from Sweden is quite high, I would say, and uh, yeah, it, the universities here are well ranked and um, globally acclaimed, so that was a very important part of uh, the criteria which I had. Great, thank you. Thank you. That was uh, that was really interesting, uh, listening to what you do. Um, I thought we should start uh, by opening up for questions um, from from the viewers. Uh, Luke, have we got any questions? We do. Yes, indeed. We have received some questions. Thank you, everybody, for uh, having sent that already. Um, for those people that join in late, just to uh, emphasize, you can write your questions at the right bottom in the panel. So take advantage as we do have the specialists on this uh, program with us. So take advantage and send your questions. Um, even if you're watching the recording, you can do that. Um, first question from Ola Dele. Um, she's asking, I have an engineering bachelor degree in geology. Uh, can I apply? And currently I'm a high school teacher. Does that fulfill the background? Therese? I think Marcus is, is a better place to, to answer that one. Yes, and the, um, the answer is that um, it depends on if you have the necessary credits in mathematics and physics, um, then that you are uh, qualified. But we have to look at your courses because geology is not listed um, among the um, uh, requirements. But uh, um, th there is uh, room for uh, uh, variations. So we will have to look at your um uh, degree and uh, how much mathematics and physics you have taken. So you can send an application okay. and we will go through. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Marcus. And I think I would like to add that it doesn't matter if you have a different career after your bachelor, um, because we won't look at that. So we, we, we look at your bachelor and what courses you took. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks a lot. I hope that helped you, Oladele. Um, question from Achas Atachira, if I say that correctly. Um, Atachira is asking, I would like to know whether there is an opportunity to work on an active research group in the field of quantum sensing devices, like optoelectronics and microwave engineering, um, the application in the nano regime. Okay, so um, is there an opportunity for him to work in an active research group on that topic? Um, yeah, I take it as um, doing some kind of uh, project work or something like that during in parallel with studies. And um, this I would say that uh, you have uh, good um, opportunities to, to do. This is not uh, uncommon and uh, interested students are always welcome uh, in the research groups. Great, thank you. Hope that answer the question for you, Atachira. Otherwise, let us know. Paulina has a question asking, is this a double degree program or is there an option for that? Uh, no, the degree that you get is, um, uh, as I listed in my, in my uh, presentation, so no. Yeah. So or it's just a, a single, a single degree. Yeah, or if you can specify perhaps a bit better um, exactly what is meant, but um, I would say it's a single degree program. Yeah. Okay, all clear. Lewis is asking, is there a minimal GPA for entry? There is no minimal uh, GPA, no. Uh, we look at uh, courses fulfilling uh, just the courses you have taken, but there is no minimal. Uh, GPA. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Ilir is asking, is it possible to send the documents later as due to the COVID situation, public administration is delayed? Um, no, I'm afraid the documents are, are due on the 1st of February. So the, the online application has to be submitted by the 15th. 
which is, I believe, what is it today? 12th, so it's in three days. Um, but then you have until 1st of February to submit the supporting documents. Uh, I'm afraid uh, we're unable to, to extend that. Okay, thank you. Dista is asking, is it easy or difficult to get a PhD spot and continue with uh, possible research at the university? Mm -hmm. um, I should say that um, in Sweden, uh, you apply for a PhD position um, as a uh, regular job, more or less. Um, and um, But I can say that um, we have a very strong uh, research environment. We recruit uh, lots of new PhD students. And I would say that with this program, I would say that you get in the line uh, in a very good position of being very qualified to, to land a, a PhD position. So I would say that it is a very good choice if you are looking to, for, to continue uh, doing a PhD here at Leo. I, I would say that uh, this is a very good, um, you, you have good opportunities, I would say. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, question from Dista. Um, do you need to have taken a separate course in Fourier transforms, or is it okay if it has only been integrated in other courses? This is okay if it's integrated. Okay, I think short but sweet answer, which should uh, clarify it for you, hopefully, Dista. Otherwise, let us know. Um, yeah, I, I should say that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I mean, um, we look at the curriculum, and, and if there is doubt, we have to look at the actual content of each course. But we will we um, we check uh, carefully if it is needed. But there is no requirement that it has to be a separate course. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ilir asking, uh, are classes online or expected to be back in September? Do you have any idea of the, the planning of your particular program? I don't dare to say it is. I think that I don't. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I think the university, um, as I understand it, uh, we're, we're online the, the next few months, but we are hoping uh, that the vaccine will be rolled out and, and things will be back to a bit more um, business as usual in the autumn. But as I said, nobody nobody knows. Okay. Thank you. Um, question from Navis uh, asking, are there any modules on programming and computing related to quantum? Yes, there are courses in um, computing related to, uh, to quantum, uh, in quantum information, quantum computers, uh, etc. So we, we have courses in that, yes. And also um, internet working and uh, computer graphics and, and uh, other courses as well. But quantum computing, definitely, yes. Okay, thank you, Marcus. Um, question from Navis. Are there any modules? Oh, sorry, that's the one we just uh, received. Um, I didn't take it off. Uh, there we go. And uh, no, actually, those were the questions we have received so far. Um, so we still have some time to answer any questions. So for the audience that has joined the live, thank you already for your, uh, your questions. We hope um, the answers are useful to you. And uh, we do have still a couple of minutes. So if you have any further questions, this is your moment. Um, having said that, we do have some questions for you, the audience. Uh, we'd like to know a couple of things. And I will show that to you as we'd like to know if you're interested in applying, first of all. So where are you at at this stage? Are you considering to apply? Yes or not sure yet? Let us know. We'd like to hear from everybody. So do make your choice. Also the people in the recording, you can participate by the way as well. So 
Do so, please. Okay. Thank you for your answers. Next question. Do you expect to apply to the program? Oh, there we go. Do you expect to apply to the program for enrollment in 2021? Okay, thank you for your answers again. And final question, if you're interested but do not expect to apply, why is that? Can you let us know a little bit of background information on your choice if you do not expect to apply, but although you're interested, uh, it would be good for us to know. Um, the university, uh, yeah, we will share this with the university and they can uh, possibly come back to you and see um, if there's anything or just for their interest as well. Great, so I'll leave that open for a, a minute or so um, and check back if we have any further questions at this stage. No, there's no further questions, so I guess um, all is clear. I'm wondering, yes, yep, I'm wondering uh, a question that often comes up uh, is, is, is there any preparatory reading that can be done in the summer before, before arriving? Is there anything that students should maybe just kind of brush up on? Marcus? Uh, you can brush up on uh, your mathematics and uh, modern physics. Okay, thanks. Mm. Uh, also, this, this program, um, I assume there are similar programs out there. Uh, what, what sets this program apart? Why, why should students choose this particular one? I think it's the uh, combination of two strong research uh, environments uh, that you get both the uh, materials physics background and you can get um, applications in nanotechnology, applications in quantum technology. And also that in our physics, we um, have um, good theoretical courses in, in um, um, uh, in, in, co in computation, um, also we do research in um, using artificial intelligence and machine learning in our materials research. Um, we have a good um, uh, interface between the students and uh, researchers, which means that you have a good opportunity to really get into research groups and work on uh, um, relevant uh, projects. Yeah. Thanks. No, that's really good. Good. How many how many students uh, do you have in a in a class? I mean, is it one class, or do they study the courses together with students from other programs? Uh, they usually study together with students from other programs. Yes. Okay. And is there a mix of international and Swedish students, or? Yes, we are used to having that, uh, this mixture. So we are well prepared to um, uh, to welcome international students. And uh, courses, all courses on the master's program are, of course, uh, given in English and uh, with English course literature and so on. So. Okay, okay. And what are the, what are the main challenges that, that students um, face uh, when they first arrive? Um, I mean, especially the international students who, who have not been in Sweden. Are there any tips you can give them for when they arrive in Sweden? Um, well, I don't know what it would be challenging, but I can say uh, generally during the program, uh, one has to be prepared that uh, this really is uh, meant to be full-time work uh, studying in the program. So we, for instance, we don't recommend... <clears throat> Um, yeah, having uh, jobs on the side or things like that, it's its uh, really meant to be a uh, full-time uh, work. Excellent. Oh, thanks, thanks. Um, yeah, I think that's something we generally uh, say. Um, we, we don't recommend part-time work, really. Or it's, it's difficult to find anyway, especially if you're not if you're not if you don't speak Swedish. Um, so it's it's not something that you should. Um, 
kind of bank on. You, you need to have the, the, the right amount of money to, to support yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Luke said we have we have more questions. <clears throat> We do, indeed. Yes, um, although those were very interesting questions as well, I'm sure, for the public. Thank you. Um, we did get a couple of more questions. Atashira was asking, uh, what type of qubit research is happening over there in Linshipping? Is it like spin-based or charge-based? Marcus? Um, we have that research uh, in, in many different uh, regimes, but I believe it's uh, spin-based. Okay, thank you. Katarina is asking, is there any research in textile engineering on that program? Textile engineering, um, not a major research branch, uh, I would say. Okay, and talking about research, and Naviz is asking about this as well. How is the scope of research based uh, jobs in the field? So the research based jobs, sorry, I should say, in the field. How is the yes, scope of the uh, research based jobs? Yeah, um, I would say that, um, I mean, um, this is a field, uh, modern material science, material science in, in general which, uh, as I said in the presentation, really uh, meets the demands that are put on society now with uh, sustainable development, requires uh, new materials and so on. Uh, and uh, what's uh, interesting also is that uh, Lin Shipping is um, uh, strong in material science and has uh, a lot of um, uh, companies around here which uh, work in on uh, materials and have materials research. Okay. Thank you. I hope that answered the question for Navis. Question from uh, Katarina. Uh, are there any uh, stipends or scholarships for international students? I can I can answer that. Uh, we do we do have have scholarships, but they are tuition fee waivers and they're partial tuition fee waivers. Um, and because they are partial tuition fee waivers, they are only open to uh, students from outside the EU and the EEA. Um, because students from within the EU, they don't pay any tuition fee in Sweden uh, because Swedish students don't. So if you're from outside this area, yes, you can apply for a scholarship uh, to cover usually between 25 and 75% uh, of the tuition fee. Uh, there aren't many uh, scholarships and, and they are open to students who have applied on time. So by 15th of January and submitted everything by 1st of February. You also have to have ranked this program as your number one priority uh, at university admissions. You can apply for up to four programs, but this needs to be number one. And then you'll find out if you're admitted in April, uh, early April, I think it might be the 3rd of April this year. Um, and after that, for about five days, the scholarship uh, application process will be open. So, so there are a few hurdles um, on, on the way. Have, have a look at the Swedish Institute. Um, they are open to some countries. I don't know them off by heart, but have a look because that is a comprehensive scholarship that also covers cost of living. But I, I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Therese. I hope so too, uh, Katarina. Otherwise, let us know. And I know some other people um, that likely will be watching the recording also wondered about this. So. And uh, thanks for answering that. Um, we did receive a couple of questions offline, so to say. Um, so I'd like to take two that might be interesting for everybody to know. Um, just to, um, f- uh, to make sure, a couple of people were asking the duration. How long is the master duration? For example, Alvaro and Constantinos asked this. Um, I think you covered it, but just to make sure. It's a it's a two year program, so four semesters, um, three with courses, and the final semester uh, with a thesis. Would you like to add anything to that, Marcus? No, it, that's completely correct. Great, <laughs> thank you. And a question from uh, Maria, who's asking, how is the library 
and how students' ideas or projects are impacting inside and also outside the university. Can you say something about that? Um, maybe I'll do broadly, and then Marcus just specifically to this program. Mm -hmm. um, but we do we do have <clears throat> a brand new library uh, on the main campus, which is Campus Valla uh, here in Linköping, slightly outside of Linköping. Uh, there's also a library at the University Hospital, uh, but we have a we have a really good uh, access to resources, both online and and in the library. Uh, we also have um, an innovation. Uh, and a support group uh, where students can go with their ideas and they can get help turning these into to viable businesses. Um, I can't remember the name of it. I think it's student innovation or something. Um, but Marcus, maybe you, you know, maybe you have some experience from, from your program. Well, um, if I agree completely with you that we have very good um, online and on-campus library uh, resources. Um, I don't know if the question was about how ideas of students impact the program. Um, it, on that topic, I would say that it is very important for us with feedback from students. And there is a, a, um, an apparatus for um, getting constant feedback from the students. And we take that very seriously in how we develop and improve our courses. Great. Thank you very much, Marcus. I hope so too. Thanks both of you for that uh, that, uh, that answer. Um, and um, yeah, with that, we have um, concluded almost the session, unless there's still a last question coming in. Uh, we can still take it. Um, but we have yeah answered uh, so all questions so far. I hope this this gave a good impression and um, to everybody who is considering this program. We, of course, hope this helped you in deciding for that as well. And um, this is being recorded. So if you want to look uh, parts of this back, we will send you the recording to your email um, that you sign up with. We'll send it in the coming day so you can still uh, have a look. Or even if you think maybe uh, someone you know could be interested in this, you are able to share that as well. Um, now, with that, from my end, I'd like to thank everybody uh, for joining. Everybody, well, we had people joining in from different parts of the world. Uh, thanks for taking the time out of your day for uh, listening to this, and we hope you appreciated it. And, of course, uh, last but not least, uh, thanks to the presenters, Marcus. Thank you very much. And Therese as well, of course. And uh, Mr. Xavier, who was with us uh, briefly in the presentation just before, obviously. Um, oh, just on the mark, we just got a question in, so maybe we can still take that. Um, Christina asking, are, any, are there any possibilities to work mostly online after graduation? Um, for example, if it's in machine learning, uh, would there be options in this field? Uh, for, for example, can you say something about career paths not restricted to lab and communication intensive environments. Well, um, I will say that I, I believe that uh, this uh, pandemic will probably reshape how we work in the uh, future. <laughs> I think that's my. And can you say something about the career paths as well? Um, besides that, it will possibly reshape. Um, will do you see any other paths re not restricted to lab and communication intensive environments as well? Yes, yes. I mean, um, as a as a uh, physicist, um, uh, if your uh, degree is in in um, theory, you will get good training with uh, how to use uh, supercomputers. Uh, or machine learning, and then typically your workday is not restricted to being physically uh, in the lab, but but um, then you can um, work in a distance mode as, as well. So I would say that you have good opportunities for for um, for that. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Marcus. I hope that answered your question, Christina. 
just on the edge of uh, still within this session. Thank you. And um, if that was uh, taken care of that for you, then I'd like to uh, slowly round it off and thank, thank everybody again. A last word over to you, Therese. I Thank you, thank you. I'd like to say a few things. Um, one is to to just a break, quick overview of the application process. Um, you apply online at universityadmissions.se uh, and in there you, you create an account uh, with all your information and you can choose up to four programs. Um, you then upload uh, proof of citizenship, for example, if, if you want to prove that you're exempt uh, from both fees, application fees and tuition fees. Um, also, it is a good idea to submit the syllabus of your program, so not just the transcript, but also the syllabus, because this can show uh, that you have actually done all these uh, courses uh, that Marcus mentioned earlier that, that are required uh, for the program. So do, do include that. Um, you upload that, uh, you do this, so you do the online application by the 15th, and then you make sure that you've uploaded everything. Also proof of, of English, so ILTS 6.5 or TOEFL 90, the online version, or if you've studied in English. And that has to be submitted by, by beginning of February. I, I think it's the 1st of February. And you also have to pay an application fee unless you are exempt, which you prove through your citizenship. Um, so, so that's the process. And, and in terms of scholarships, it's very important that you, you stick to the deadlines. And it's also important that you select this program as your number one priority uh, within the applications, when you rank the applications. So that's the application process. Um, there's lots more information at liu.se forward slash education. Uh, there is a tab called um, apply um, application. So it's, you know, details um, very well what you have to do, but read up on the program again, make, make sure that you, you know what you've applied for, you know, in detail. Um, and have a look uh, also more around the program there. And, and, and I think we might have testimonials from, from a previous program. Um, and then we have a Facebook uh, account, uh, liu.international. You can ask us questions there. Um, so connect with us. And we also have an Instagram account, which is at leanshaping.university. And this account, a student, an international student takes over every week. So you can actually follow in, in there footsteps for a week pretty much and see see how what, what their life is like here and what their thoughts are they're not all from uh, the same program so it's a, it's a spread they're not the same program they're not the same country um so it's a variety but you you get a real a really good feel for for their experience so have a look and if you have questions uh, another good thing is to to uh, put their question as a reply to to one of the emails you've been sent by us so for example in invitation to, to this webinar. So just hit reply and, uh, and and ask us any questions that you might have after the webinar. But other, apart from that, I'd like to say thank you for having joined us. And, and thank you, Marcus, um, for taking the time to to answer questions and, and um, share information about your program. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>